All FNC investments out there with their outlook on the Indian markets. But joining us this morning is Amrish Baliga, Managing Partner for Global Wealth Management at Edelweiss Financial Services. Morning, Amrish. Uh, it's Good been morning. a decent start to the September series. I was talking to a couple of FNO experts as well over the last couple of days. And we've got a decent recovery coming in. But the big question as always, will this last? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the way I see the recovery, it's more of a pullback. I don't think it's a fresh run because uh, if you look at the data points, uh, there is nothing to really feel optimistic uh, or, or, I mean, on the markets. So the way I see it is, uh, I mean, we have seen a decent recovery from those uh, 51, 50, 5200 levels. So it can actually, uh, I mean, touch possibly 5600, 5620, but beyond that seems very, very difficult. And uh, my advice to my clients has been that in this recovery, possibly exit to a certain extent, get into cash. Next two or three months is going to be difficult. And I suppose uh, you'll get uh, most of the stocks which you're selling now, much lower levels, much better valuations. Morning, Amrish. Uh, that's Good been morning. said about Nifty. What's the call as far as bank Nifty is concerned and any specific bank stocks that, you're, uh, that are on your radar right now? Uh, banks again, I mean, uh, we feel that there will be a lot of pain going ahead uh, clearly with the way the economy is in the doldrums. I, I mean, we don't see the credit growth really happening. So that's going to be one pain point. At the same time, uh, again, uh, you will have the NPS increasing and uh, I mean, earlier we were not so worried about the private sector banks. But even there, I think uh, you will have that NPA pain. So uh, I mean, uh, uh, barring a few private sector banks like HDFC Bank, in fact, others will be quite wary. And as far as the PSU banks are concerned, I think most of them will see NPA growth. So I think at least for the next one or two quarters, uh, one should be a bit wary of investing in the banking sector. I am Risha. So I thought let's just quickly go across to the market opening in the kind of course that we'll pick up. Uh, 20 odd seconds left. Uh, remember, keep an eye on the banking pack. Once again, a couple of them have seen a decent rally. The auto pack, you've seen some weakness on m and and Hero Motor. Yes, our Marty has shot up quite sharply. And as we were talking to the analysts from CIMB also earlier, they said that the currency angle once again could be something to track pretty closely for Maruti. So let's see as to what kind of cues we pick up for those counters. Both those sectors pretty much on the radar. The opening itself is once again on the higher side. You're talking of 120 odd point rally, 100 point rally as far as Sensex is concerned in terms of opening moves there. Reliance once again on the higher side as far as early trades concerned. ONGC also pretty much on the higher side, 1.3% gain there. ITC had shot up quite sharply yesterday. That one still holding on to gains of almost 1.1% is what we are actually seeing initially. Couple of IT stocks that are on the radar. Infi is down actually by, uh, by almost 0.08% and surprisingly so that's the only stock in negative. TCS, 7 tenths of a percent higher is what we are looking at. Wipro is also up by around about 6 tenths of a percent. Now you have company for Infosys with ICSA Bank and Tata Power also slipping a little bit. Whole India up by 1.2%, uh, Bharti is trading higher as well, BHL 1.5% higher there is what we are looking at. m, &M got recovering a little bit after yesterday's fall, 2 tenths of a percent higher, SBI 4 tenths uh, of a percent up more. Let's pull up the Nifty, get a quick mention there as well. The index is up marginally there, just 10 odd points higher, 35 stocks gaining, 14 stocks losing out and just 1 or 2 stocks trading extremely flat there. Individual names that are on the move this morning. Bharti Airtel still shot up around about 1.7%, top gainer there. BHL and Kodak Mahindra Bank are showing gains of 1.5%. Coal India and Ultratech also on the higher side as far as trades concerned. Now you have a couple of other stocks that are losing out like HTFC which is down by nearly 6 tenths of a percent. ICSA Bank had a decent run yesterday, some cool off. HTFC Bank though has been actually on a little bit of a weak footing of late. That one's losing out a little bit, ran back see half a percent lower. Industrial Bank had a decent run yesterday. Some correction there, six tenths of a percent lower, and Nifty's actually moved into negative now. 55.47 is what we're tracking. So, uh, Tanvi, that's the kind of opening that we've seen so far. It's been pretty muted and a flat one. Absolutely, uh, the tide seems to be turning towards the negative here, Priyank. Let's take a look at some of the other stocks, uh, beginning with the oil and gas sector. We've got Oil India, which is still up by about half a percent, but HPCL as well as IOC, both of them are down by a quarter of a percent for HPCL as well as IOC down by almost three tenths of a percent. BPCL, though, is showing some positive signs. Uh, we've been talking about the aviation sector, Jet Airways. Uh, is still showing some strong gains, so that's up by almost 3% in trade. Uh, SpiceJet also is up by 2%. Kingfisher in news uh, uh, because of the decision that they've taken to sue one of the engine companies. That stock's also trading up. Uh, uh, look into... 
All right, uh, at this point of time, uh, let's just go across uh, and listen in to uh, the Bloomberg Network where we are talking about one of the biggest news. In 2008, he was in charge of Microsoft's office product suite and then left in 2010 to head up uh, Nokia as CEO. Many are saying that he could be in the next position to take over Stephen Bomber's position. More importantly, going forward, they really need a new leader. If it's not Stephen Bomber, who is it going to be that investors trust? That's right, and uh, I think what we what we know from mobile telecommunications that uh, market advantages are not permanent. Fortunes can and do change. Mm. So uh, uh, th th this could be a good opportunity, I believe. Here's here's what I wonder. So Elop is brought in from Microsoft. I think he spent like his whole career at Microsoft, a uh, long time. He's brought in as the new CEO to change Nokia. They splash out with it. You know, huge press conference, flashy product launches all around the world. He's done this for what, about a year now at, at Nokia? He started in 2010. Okay, yeah. so what, what's different and how does this change the game? I'm not, I know you're not an expert on Nokia, no, but I, you see companies do this, right? Blackberry did this and nothing changes. Is there a point at which a business is just Well, I think that's, that's an open-ended question, isn't it? I think that it's hard to answer that one, isn't it? Because some have been. I mean, look at Nokia when it started off. It used to make, uh, you know, Wellington boots uh, three decades ago. What? And they made TVs after that. So, you know, then they went and became the number one player in, in mobile telephony. But let's get to market strategy, shall we, uh, right. Jeff? Okay, <laughs> that's what you're here to talk about, I Yeah, suppose. but do you have a view on the technology sector as a whole? I mean, is it worth I investing in? Yeah. It's, uh, it seems to be one of the few areas where consumers are, are still willing to dip into their wallets. Uh, yes, so we're still positive on technology and becoming more positive, positive on the cyclical sectors generally uh, as the uh, US economy uh, picks up steam and as the global economy normalizes and uh, improves uh, in 2014. So I think industrials, technology, uh, it's time to move back into the cyclicals. Maybe a little early at the moment, but... Um, that's going to be any the regional to be. preference when you look at that theme? So, sorry? Is there any regional preference when you take a look at the technology theme? Are you more eyeing these uh, U.S. tech companies? Are you looking at some of the behemoths that are coming out of Asia? I think uh, the uh, recovery is going to be led by uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. technology. That's the big global story breaking right now. Microsoft has agreed to buy Nokia's mobile phone devices unit as well uh, as some of their other services, including the services as well as the patents division. The entire deal is pegged at about five and a half billion euros. This includes about 3.8 billion euros for the devices or the handset part of Nokia's business. There's also 1.65 billion dollars that Microsoft will pay for, for Nokia's patented services. Uh, that's the biggest news that we've seen as far as Microsoft is concerned after the announcement that Steve Ballmer will, uh, uh, will retire within the next 12 months. But this is their gameplay where when it comes to the handset devices. They've been losing out as far as that entire mobile phone segment is concerned to giants like Samsung and Apple. And this is going to be their new strategy. They've decided to acquire Nokia's handset devices business as well as their data center uh, and patent services. Uh, so a, hu a huge development they're coming in Priyank five and a half billion euros and Nokia saying that uh, their CEO will step aside so uh, Nokia CEO Elop will be stepping aside no clarity though yet who will take over the new unit I mean, I can only see two things out here. One, the weekend for both bankers in US and Europe being ruined. On the back of that huge deal taking place, as far as where is on our Vodafone's concerned, now you have Microsoft and Nokia also. So, well, nonetheless, but still, it shows you signs of the kind of way the economy seems to probably be indicating what the outlook is going forward. Big and hectic m &A activity taking place as far as both US and Europe are concerned. That's the big news of which is breaking right now on, your uh, on Bloomberg TV India itself, where Microsoft... Uh, has gone ahead and looking to buy out the business unit for Nokia at around about 5.44 billion euro is what the deal has been pegged at. All right, just a quick mention on how our markets also have been panning out. Just pull that up for you as well. Nifty and Sensex both uh, pretty muted as far as the initial trades concerned right now. Nifty at 5.541, two tenths of a percent lower, almost there. And Sensex also pretty much flat is what we're seeing. Amrish, in terms of sectors right now, what are you advising? 
Uh, in fact, uh, since we are looking at the markets uh, coming down, uh, we are not really advising people to buy uh, into anything as of now. Uh, but uh, clearly the sectors uh, where we are uh, quite bearish to extremely cautious is uh, clearly banking as well as uh, real estate. I think these are the two sectors from where one should be exiting to a large extent. But then, uh, I mean, once the market comes down, uh, possibly metals is one space uh, which I think one should look at because it seems that uh, the cycle is turning. We have seen an extremely good movement in the metals in the last uh, three weeks. But then I think at these levels, uh, they have become a bit pricey. So I think one should buy it on correction. I mean, so, uh, like a stock like Tata Steel, I think uh, closer to about uh, 230, 240 could be a good buy. Mm. Amish, what about the IT pack? Is that something still on the radar? Uh, IT pack, I think one can just hold on for the time being because still uh, we don't have a handle on the rupee. But then uh, we believe that uh, this will be only a one-time gain for most of the IT companies because uh, finally when you have uh, the revision in uh, uh, I mean the billing rates, I think uh, the rupee will be taken into account. So I don't think there will be too much of a gain for long term. But yes, I suppose the short term gain will be there, which is I think to a large extent already into the price. But as long as the rupee is weak, I think uh, there would be interest in IT. So I think I can hold on. But buying at these uh, levels, I think the risk reward ratio is not really favorable. Amrish, what about uh, FMCG sector then? Um, the, the lot of, most of these stocks have run up quite a bit in the past few days. Still a good time to buy FMCG? I don't think so. I think it's uh, possibly time to book out to a certain extent. It's been the favorite of the market for quite a while. And again, uh, looking at the way the economy is, I really don't see the consumer demand uh, move, I mean, shooting up from here. Clearly, we are, we are seeing a slowdown in consumer demand. And especially in the discretionary ones, where uh, in fact the margins are much higher for the FMCG companies. I think that's where uh, you will have the major fall in consumer demand. So I think at these levels, one should look at uh, possibly exiting to a certain extent, especially stocks like HUL. Mm. Right. Cole, BHGL is the top gainer on the index. Don't know how often you were to say that. JP Associates up around about 1.6 percent. Coal India is holding on to gains around about 1.7 percent. Gain India is the other top gainer as well. Hero Motors actually having a little bit of a weak session today, 2.5% cut on that one. Reliance Industries also is down nearly 1%. HL is down nearly 6 tenths of a percent. ITC also after that run up yesterday is on somewhat of a negative footing today. Uh, Amrish, two stocks, Reliance Industries and Hero Motor. Your thoughts on these two? Uh, Reliance Industries is one of the very few stocks uh, where I'm still uh, quite bullish. I think uh, this uh, cut in the rupee and the way the oil prices are going, I think uh, this is uh, positive for uh, like Reliance Industries uh, because of which I see the downside as quite limited. So one can still risk and buy at these levels. In fact, I have a long term target of about 1125, 1150 for Reliance and especially in the view of the gas price hike, I think that would also be one of the major kickers for Reliance going ahead. And the other one, uh, Ambrish, was Hero Moto. Uh, Hero Moto, maybe we could have a short term sort of a move again. Uh, looking at the festive season, that's when uh, again the sales, uh, I mean, move up for uh, Hero uh, Moto Corp as well as other two wheelers. So, uh, I mean, this one being the leader of the pack, I think uh, one could look at it from a trading point of view. But again, I still find it a bit expensive. For, so, it's not an investment for me, but from a, tra a trading point of view for the next two months, possibly yes. Quickly then, uh, what about the pharma sector in between? There was a big overhang when it came, uh, comes to the entire regulatory scenario, what the USFDA right. was looking into. Do you think that period is now over and uh, there is some upside for pharma stocks? No, I don't think that period is over, but then I think one needs to be a bit choosy as far as the pharma stocks are concerned. Uh, so we are not really buying across. Uh, I think the only stocks which uh, we have been recommending uh, is basically Dr. Reddy, Lupin, and Sun Pharma. I think these three are the, I mean, uh, safest of the, uh, I mean, the, the the pharma pack. So I think uh, even at these levels, I think one can just hold on. But again, looking at the market conditions, uh, surely I will not advise people to add more at the current levels. Right, Ambrish. Thanks so much for joining in this morning Thank with you. your perspective on the markets and a couple of sectors to look out for going forward from here. That's a view coming in from Edelweiss Financial Services. So their position on this market. Just a quick mention, pretty muted trade across the markets today. Sensex and Nifty both somewhat uh, uh, flat with a negative bias there. Three tenths of a percent cut on the Nifty. And on that note, we'll wrap up this show. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on First Trace. Don't go anywhere. In Business is coming up next with Harsha Subramani. Thank you for watching. First Trades, presented by BSC, Investors Protection.